Hey guys, it's Trinaline here. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon WTF Moments, the series that's always late, isn't it? Like, it's never uploaded on time. I'm working on it though, I'm working on it, bear with me. If you're a fan of WTF Moments and you're ready for more, make sure you hit that like button. I know you don't think it makes a difference, but it makes a massive difference. Every single like that goes on the video helps me out so, so much. So if you really love this content, take the 0.2 seconds that you need to hit the like button, just so you can keep the series happy and healthy and trundling along. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you're new and share the video with a friend. But without further ado, let's get into all the WTF Moments for Pokemon Season 1, Episode 37, Ditto's Mysterious Mansion. The episode begins with Ash, Misty and Brock getting caught in a sudden flash storm, and when they run for shelter, they stumble across a mansion in the middle of nowhere. I feel like this happens all the time for some reason. It's like 75% of the locations in the Pokemon world just aren't on any maps. When they enter, they find themselves in what appears to be an abandoned theatre. And watching this back in 2020, this just feels like the norm. The gang come across a Pikachu that doesn't quite look like your average everyday Pikachu. This one's face looks like mine does every time my girlfriend takes a top. Off. Direct quote from Brock. Could be a new kind of Pikachu. Brock thought about regional variant Pokemon before any of us did. He really is the best Pokemon breeder. Ash wants to catch this weird looking Pikachu and opts to have his own Pikachu use Thundershock. Because of course he does. Although come to think of it, hitting it with a not very effective move isn't a bad shout at all, since you can slowly work its health down without the risk of fainting it. So maybe Ash is a genius. Ash throws a Pokeball to try and catch the weird looking Pikachu, but his Pokeball gets knocked out the way by another Pokeball that's thrown by this Ash Ketchum look-alike, who doesn't really look like Ash, but is just wearing the exact same clothes as Ash. Like by those standards, I apparently look like every man that's ever shopped at Primark. You fucking do though, Liam. <laughs> Brock instantly recognizes that the look-alike is a girl. Hmm. Maybe Brock's a bear. By the way, if you know what movie I was referencing just then, let me know what movie it is down in the comments. According to Duplica, the Ash Ketchum- Oh, fuck off. According to Duplica, the Ash Ketchum cosplayer, they're in the house of Imite. Oh, it's such a shit name. They should have called it the Imitation Station. Brock comments that Duplica might be a little young for him. And that's just kind of creepy, really. I find it really weird when Duplica turns to the messed up Pikachu and says, Ah, oh, it still hasn't got over that old habit. As if it's been a long time since she's seen this Pokemon. I feel like she should have actually said something to Ash and Co like, Sorry, it still hasn't got over this old habit. Which does sound almost the same, but the way it's emphasized makes it sound like this person has been spending regular time with the Pokemon as opposed to the former. The Pikachu reveals itself to be a transformed Ditto, and sorry for stereotyping, but Misty's reaction to seeing Ditto is the exact same reaction every girl I've ever known has had upon seeing a Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> so literally right after Dexter says, Ditto, a transform Pokemon. It is able to rearrange the cells of its body and assume any form. Ash chimes in with, And Ditto can make itself look just like anything. Thanks, Professor Ketchum. That's literally just been said. So according to Dublica, this Ditto just can't seem to transform its face. It's defective. Send it back. Jokes aside, I am a big advocate for Ditto keeping its face whenever it transforms. I'm sure you've seen the Ditto face plushes that they sell in the Pokemon centers and I would absolutely love the games to adopt this feature. I totally get that it means creating a thousand extra models of every single Pokemon in every single form with a Ditto face just on the off chance that someone uses a Ditto against it and uses Transform to transform into that Pokemon, but I'm a gamer. Entitlement is what we do. Ash, curious as always, asks Duplica if there are any other Pokemon that can transform like Ditto can, and Duplica says, nope, Ditto's one of a kind. Just casually ignoring Mew's existence there. Generation 1 Mew was considered a very rare Pokemon, so it makes complete sense that everyday people such as Duplica didn't know it existed. Nope. Not good enough. If 11 year old Liam, back when most homes didn't have internet in them, knew about Mew, then the people in the Pokemon world definitely have no excuse for not knowing about it. Ash thinks Ditto only knowing Transform is boring, since you can't have the fun of teaching it different attacks. I'm sorry Ash, what was that? Different attacks? Pikachu! You Pikachu! Shot. Thunderbolt yes, attack! Thunder you Pikachu. Thunderbolt! Pikachu! Pikachu. Thundershock! Thunder Pikachu! Different attacks. Duplica challenges Ash to a Pokemon battle to show him Ditto's true power, and says that she'll be choosing her Ditto to battle, of course. Ash replies with, You choose what you want! Well, no. She's supposed to be showing you Ditto's true power, so if she chose any other Pokemon than Ditto, she wouldn't be doing that, so she kinda has to use Ditto, so she can't just choose what she wants. Idiot. Ditto 
Pluto transforms into Ash's Bulbasaur and counters its Razor Leaf with Vine Whip. And for some reason, everyone's super shocked that Ditto can imitate a Pokemon's attacks. How stupid are these people? Did they really think Ditto transforms into a Pokemon and then just sits there and does nothing for the rest of the battle? What would be the point in that? They keep trying to push this thing of Duplica referring to Ash as Ashy Boy like it's some kind of, oh mate, sick burn. But his name is literally Ash and he is literally a boy. So why is he getting so offended? Ash's Bulbasaur gets battered by an imposter using just one four times resisted move. Ash's Bulbasaur is crap. Pass it on. Duplica shows off what is basically her cosplay room and models her outfits of Officer Jenny and Nurse Joy. Brock agrees that the costumes are good, but says that Duplica doesn't really capture the more adult charm of the real people. Well, that's reassuring. Brock may be a perv, but at least he's not a pedo. I was gonna make a joke about predators, but it's a little bit too cold in here for that. It's really nappy. Nippy. Nippy. I said nippy. So how come when Duplica imitates anybody, be it Nurse Joy, be it Officer Jenny, be it Misty, the outfit is always spot on and she's always an exact likeness of that person. But when she dressed as Ash, she didn't make any effort to change her face or hair. Duplica wants to be the world's greatest ditto master, which basically consists of her charging people to come and watch her ditto transform into various different Pokemon, which sounds kind of boring when you think about it. Like once you've seen it transform three or four times, you've kind of got the gist, haven't you? She also does in person impersonations of other Pokemon herself. But when you have a Pokemon next to you that can literally, allegedly, transform into an exact replica of that Pokemon, doesn't Duplica's half ass cosplay seem a bit underwhelming? To be fair though, this one's top tier. And do you know what else is top tier? G Fuel! Today we're drinking Rainbow Sherbet! Use code ACE to get 10% off. Hey look, it's Bobby Lashley! Applause to anybody that gets that Botchamania reference from over a decade ago. When Ditto transforms into this Voltorb, its mouth is on the bottom part of the Voltorb, but then when the scene changes to a shot from within the crowd, the mouth is on the top part of the Voltorb. That's not even lazy animating, it's just dumb. One guy in the crowd says, What a fake! It can't transform at all! One, of course it's fake. If it was just a regular Voltorb, you'd genuinely be being scammed. And two, you can't say it doesn't transform at all. Literally 95% of it has transformed from a little pile of purple goo to a red and white ball. By definition, it transformed. Team Rocket successfully steal Ditto. What the fuck? Team Rocket want Ditto to transform into Dratini, but ignoring the fact that kids in the West wouldn't have seen the Dratini episode and therefore wouldn't understand Team Rocket's obsession with it, why not Dragonite? I guess they didn't have a picture of it? Team Rocket roleplay handing over Ditto transformed into Dratini to Giovanni, but Jesse, playing the role of Giovanni, rewards them by giving them his place as the head of Team Rocket? Why would they even think that's something he'd do? What kind of idiot says, Ah, you found me a rare Pokemon. Here, have my career. Jesse weirdly asks Ditto to transform into, very specifically, a child from a photograph if they were an adult. That's a bit creepy. Like sure, her saying that she wants to see this person as an adult is reassuring, but you're still kind of low-key saying you're attracted to the kid? I don't know, it just, oof, just weirds me out a little bit. Also, she's really overestimating Ditto's abilities here. How is Ditto meant to know what this kid's gonna look like as an adult when and there are so many factors that would affect how he ends up looking. Ditto, whilst transformed into a photo of a child, licks Jesse. Is not a sentence I ever thought I'd need to say. This is not what I signed up for. I have a problem with Ditto transforming into the book. When it transformed into the photo, all the detail from the original picture was still there, apart from the kid's face. So technically, all of the stuff that were on the pages of that book should have been retained on the Ditto version, apart from the Electrode or the Dratini his face should have been a Ditto face. I'm just saying. Jesse threatens to transform Ditto into Jelly. It basically is Jelly. Brock says they've sent Pidgeotto and Zubat out on surveillance. Surprised they remember how to fly. They've been in the Pokeballs for so long. Well, actually, Liam. Ah, no. We are not doing that. Ash randomly goes on a tangent about how Ditto's progress and power are directly connected to its trainer's own. And every time I listen to it, it just sounds less encouraging and more like, the reason you're Ditto shit is because you're shit. Does anyone else hear it like that? Ditto Face Meowth is my favorite of all the Ditto faces in this episode. Just the expression alone is an absolute mood. Team Rocket threatened to harm Ditto if it doesn't get Meowth's face right. And miraculously, it does. Spitting in the face of everything I've ever learned about training animals. 
animals. Ugh, the good guys are doing the Team Rocket motto in the Team Rocket uniforms. It's honestly as cringy as it looks. Needless to say, Ash and Brock really can't pull off the Team Rocket look the way James can. James is pissed that Duplica said ignite all people instead of unite all people, and that's why I didn't bring it up earlier as a WTF moment. James had me covered. Cheers, mate. It's revealed that Ditto can also imitate the voice of whatever it is it's transformed into, so because Team Rocket's Meowth can speak fluent English, so can Ditto. That's really cool, but when Duplica says, we'll be taking Ditto now, why does the Ditto Meowth say, no way? Does it not want to be saved? Man, Stockholm Syndrome's rough. Duplica thanks Team Rocket for helping Ditto reach its full potential, and Team Rocket pretend to give Ditto back to her, but actually handing over their own Meowth instead. Now, while technically this is a great plan, how could they tell them apart? Duplica realizes the Meowth she's holding isn't her ditto and throws it all the way up to Team Rocket's hot air balloon. Mate, she just launched a nine pound cat about 30 feet into the air with one arm? That's incredible strength. Screw being a ditto master, Duplica should give WWE a call, you know, so they can book her terribly. Team Rocket have a cannon sticking out the bottom of their hot air balloon and ditto transforms into it, but technically doesn't that mean that the cannon that ditto transformed into is technically upside down. Man, this Ditto always has to fuck something up, doesn't it? Did did Pikachu technically just jump up Ditto's arsehole? Ah yes, the good old fashioned net. My favourite electrical conductor. After Team Rocket are dispatched and Ditto goes back to Duplica, we cut to Duplica finishing off fixing up the Imite house. But did she really make Ash and Co stand around and watch while she did it? Bit rude, they've got places to be. I'm just saying that's a really tall ladder to be standing on grass with no one at the bottom supporting it. Mate, Imite house gives zero fucks about health and safety. So we end the episode with Team Rocket trying to dress Meowth up as a Dratini to hand over to the boss. Now I get that the joke is that it's a stupid idea, but even for Team Rocket, this is really dumb. Like Giovanni's gonna take one look at that thing and sack you. You can't just hand him something that looks like a Meowth stuffed into a condom. So those are my WTF moments for Pokemon Season 1, Episode 37, Ditto's Mysterious Mansion. Let me know your favourites down below and any that I missed. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, it's super important. If you want to support the channel like the beautiful people here do, pledge to my Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash Ace Trainer Liam and save money on G Fuel. Use code ACE. But until next time, I'm Ace Trainer Liam. Keep on training.